It's going to be episode 6 of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at the subject of angels. And want to take you to a story that involves angels in Genesis chapter 19 to give you a further understanding about the nature and character of angels. So in Genesis chapter 19, what you have is the character in the Bible named Lot in the wicked place Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord sends two angels to tell Lot about the coming destruction and to get him out of Sodom and Gomorrah before the Lord burns it all up. But while we go through this story, we're going to see some things about the character and nature of angels. In Genesis 19, 1 and verse 1 and 2, it says, And there came two angels to Sodom and even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So the first thing that you see is they are made superior to men. They have no fear of man. They were willing to abide in the street all night. They, didn't, they weren't worried about staying at Lot's house and being safe from the crazy people that were living there because they're made superior to men. In Hebrews 2, 6, and 7, it says, But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou made, madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crannest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. So a man was made a little lower than the angels. And these angels are not scared to abide in the street all night in one of the most wickedest places that's ever existed. They have no fear of man. Psalms 103.20 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. So they excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Second Peter 2.11 says, Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them for the Lord. So angels are made greater in power and might than humans were. Now Genesis 19, 2 and 3, it says, And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in to him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. So notice that angels have free will. Notice they could have stayed in the street all night if they wanted to. That was their original plan. However, Lot changed their mind. So they could have done what they wanted to. God, God didn't create them without a free will. They have the ability to choose. And as you know, all the angels didn't choose God Almighty. In Second Peter 2, 4 through 5, it says, For if God spurred not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Jude 6 and 7, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Revelation twelve seven And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Matthew twenty five forty one. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So you see, some angels left their first estate. Angels are in hell, the ones that rebelled. And then you have the Bible talking about the devil and his angels. Right now, the spirits of angels 
that rebelled are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And one of these days they will be called up to the great white throne judgment. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, Know you not that we shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life. So the saints one day are going to judge the angels. Another thing about the angels is they can go beyond spiritual into the physical. You saw just now in Genesis 19, they can eat physical food. They can touch physical objects and even people. In Genesis 19, 10, it says, But the men, which was the angels, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the, shut to the door. Genesis 19, 4 and 5 says, But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to, to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. So angels are male in the Bible. You know how I know? Because these are sodomites, homosexuals, and they're wanting to know sexually these angels who are male in jude 6 and 7 again it says and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day even as sodom and gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after a strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire so you see, the angels were male. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they wanted to go after these angels. And as the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 2, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for, some by, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. I'm not sure if they knew that they were angels, but they obviously knew that there was something different about these men. Matthew twenty two thirty says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. And many people use this verse to say that angels are sexless. But this just says that they don't marry. And they don't marry because they're male. They're all male. They don't marry each other. Genesis 19, 6 through 11 tells us some more incredible things about these angels. It says, And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. So he's telling these men not to go after these angels that just came into his house. So he says, Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do you to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men, which is the angels, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So next thing you see about these angels is they have supernatural power. They were able to strike men with blindness. They were able to travel from heaven and back. In Genesis 28, 12, the Bible says, talking about Jacob, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. So angels can fly, they can transfer back and forth from heaven, even though they don't have wings. And Revelation 8.13 says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Daniel 9.21 says, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me at the time of the evening oblation. So you see that the angels can fly without wings. Now Genesis nineteen twelve through 13 And the men said unto Lot, 
Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So submit to the authority of God. Submitting to the authority of God is another attribute of good angels. Even though angels have great power, it is still less power than what God has. They are created beings created by an all-powerful God. In John 1, 1 through 4, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life, and life was the light of men. So, it says all things were made by him. The angels are created beings made by Jesus Christ. It says in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. So Jesus Christ is light years ahead of the angels, more powerful than the angels. The book of Hebrews explains how he's better than the angels. First Peter 3.22 says, referring to Jesus who has gone into heaven, is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So angels, they're amazing creatures. We've looked at noteworthy angels. We talked about Michael and Gabriel in the last study. And now we've seen some more attributes of the angels. They're amazing creatures, but not as amazing as Jesus Christ. They may be more powerful than us, but those angels that sinned will be judged by us and will be even more powerful than the angels one day when we get our glorified body. But this has been another episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we've just used this episode to do some more character building and looked at the angels who are under the real King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Angels who are under the real King that's on the real throne in heaven. <laughs>